today somebody gets relentlessly made fun of and gets thrown out of an establishment. We'll get to that pro revenge in a bit, but first, steal from grandma? You're losing out on that money one way or another. As Christmas time rolls around, I still feel petty towards my nephew. My mom lived with me for a few years while getting back on her feet. She doesn't have much money, but she would always help out her kids if they needed it, even if she really shouldn't. One of my nephews, around 10 years old at the time, asked to borrow my Nintendo Switch so he could play Fortnite. I said yes because I never played it. After a bit, he asked my mom, his grandma, for $10 for the battle pass. She said yes and stupidly put her credit card in his account for it. Some point in the future, another $10 or so was charged to it on accident, according to the nephew. Oh well, not a big deal. She let it go. Maybe it's lack of experience, but I find the whole account thing between Nintendo Switch, Epic Games, and Fortnite to be confusing. I tried over and over to delete her card info out of the accounts, but he would always get it back somehow. I don't think he could have written her info down. My brother had to drive 45 minutes to get the switch to me to delete the info. Over the next year or two, he charged something like $300 to the credit card outside of the time she gave him permission. Somehow it was always a mistake and he would immediately text and apologize and got to where he asked us not to tell his parents. My mom wouldn't do anything about it other than tell him to stop. I tried to stay out of it because it was between them. So, I got fed up after a certain point. I texted my brother to bring me my Switch back, and I was keeping it. I told him about all the charges. My brother has always used my mom for money, including stealing from her. So, he acted concerned, but really, he couldn't or wouldn't pay her back. He brought it back to me. Nephew kept asking to have it back and was apologizing, but the answer was no. That wasn't enough for me. Mom wasn't going to force them to pay back the money but I couldn't keep myself out of it any longer. I decided the nephew wouldn't be getting the $25 to $50 gifts he normally gets for Christmas and birthdays. He could pay his debt back over the next three to six years, and I'd make sure she got it since we have some linked bank accounts. It's been two years now without any gifts from me. He may not even notice, but I do, and I feel good about it. She still buys him gifts, of course, but she's being repaid one way or another. Well, at least it seems like somebody cares about grandma here. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy stories of awesome revenge, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is, bully me for being fat? I'll snitch on you to your fat mom. I randomly remember this event today and thought it would fit well here. When I was around 10, my mom was in a local mom's group, and they would meet up at the park during the summer to talk while all of us kids played. It was a relatively large group, And like all large groups of children around various ages, there were a few bullies. I was a super dorky, annoying kid who had way too much confidence for my own good, so I probably did something to annoy this older boy around 12 enough to pick on me. At first, he would just poke at how I was short in passing, which didn't bother me that much. Then it changed to calling me fat and short. I minded the fat part a little more. But my friends advised me to just ignore the boy, especially because he was much bigger than us and had a group of friends who were also mean. So for a while, I just shook off the jabs. Then it happened. The boy did something 10-year-old me considered unforgivable. One day, we were all playing Red Rover. Red Rover, Red Rover, let OP come over, the children on the opposite side called. Yet, when my name was called out, another name was shouted louder by my bully. Piggy, come over! I felt a flush of embarrassment and anger in my cheeks as I jogged over to the other side. But I tried to hold my head up. That was until I heard the boy and his friends oinking like pigs in my direction. I felt tears threaten to brim in my eyes and anger kindle in my heart. And right then and there, as the rest of the kids were yelling, Red Rover, I came up with my plan. I knew there was no point confronting the boy. It would only make things worse but I glanced over to a few yards away where his mom was chatting with some of the other moms. My bully's mom was a kind lady, but she was very strict with her children, according to my mom who was friends with her, and I knew her son would never act up in front of her and live to tell the tale. His mom was also very short and plump. For a few weeks, I waited and watched, and finally, my chance came. We were at the pool for the birthday party of one of the kids, and I looked up to see my bully's mom head towards the bathroom. 
I followed her and waited by the sinks. I stared down at my hands and thought of my favorite cat dying until I felt tears begin to roll down my cheeks. A stall door swung open and I heard footsteps and the sound of water running, but I kept my head down. Hey, are you okay, dear? I looked up at my bully's mom and sniffed. No, this boy keeps calling me fat and short and he makes pig noises when I walk by him. The bully's mom was sympathetic, telling me that it was very mean of anyone to behave that way and that she used to get bullied too. Then, the moment I was hoping for came. Who's the boy that's bullying you? She asked. I said I would show her, and the amount of satisfaction I felt when I pointed to her son was enormous. Her face fell, and then her expression darkened. I'll take care of this, don't worry. She walked away from me back to the pavilion the moms were sitting on her, and then I heard her call out his name. I didn't hear what she said to him, but my friend who was reapplying sunscreen told me it was a long scolding about how she had heard he was bullying kids and how she thought she had taught him better. Then, how disappointed she was that he would fat shame anyone when he knows some people have no control. My bully sat out the rest of our time there and didn't come to the next play date. He never bothered me again. See, this was a risky maneuver though, banking that the mom is a good person. The mom of a bully sometimes isn't a person you can rely on. Our next story is cheat on my friend and the gift that keeps on giving. Many years ago, I had a friend Mike that met a stupidly pretty girl. In a couple months, she moved in with him. They became a couple and he paid for her college, studying to be a vet tech. We didn't know at the time she was living with someone else when she met Mike and monkey branched over to him, young and stupid. Mike had a good job, regular hours, as easygoing a guy as you can possibly imagine. No drugs, light social drinking, didn't smoke, just no bad habits. Something about her set me on the back foot. Nothing I could put my finger on at the time, but just a little too friendly, flirty with her personality and looks she got away with it. I know that red flag now. Nearly two years into this relationship, an electrical transformer failed at Mike's workplace. It was going to take three days to fix, so the company sent everybody home for that time. About 10.30 a.m., Mike took his pickup truck to the city waste disposal and got a big load of mulch for the backyard slash shrub beds and went in the home through the alley, backed up to the house, went in through the garage door. He never saw the driveway out front. Mike goes in through the garage to get tools, hears something, and goes through the kitchen to the living room to find his girlfriend and her platonic friend in both their underwear, the house smelling like you know what, her sitting on his lap drinking Mike's beer, she's supposed to be at school, the school he's paying for. Mike stays behind the corner and listens. She's telling the guy what a wimp my friend Mike is, how his manhood is the size of a gummy bear, how she can't believe how stupid Mike is that he hasn't figured this out in almost a year, etc. Mike goes back out, does the job at hand, takes care of the mulch, then sits in a patio chair. Eventually she notices his truck in the backyard and goes looking. He won't look at her, speak to her, won't respond at all. She calls his brother who tells her to call an ambulance since Mike's brother thinks he's had a stroke or something. She thinks Mike is catatonic. He just doesn't want to deal with her. The police arrive with EMS. The officer is a longtime friend from grade school on. Mike turns the ambulance away and the police officer calls his closest friends, including me, when Mike tells him what happened and he doesn't want to look or talk to her. Mike won't say a word to her or when she's around won't look in her direction. Probably shock, anger, rejection, which kind of freaked the officer out, and I can't blame him. He eventually talks to us. The cat's out of the bag. The officer, being smarter than us on this stuff, has a plan. Checks her ID for address for his report. She's never changed her address to his. He owns the home, the vehicle she's driving, not on the mortgage or paying rent. So, she gets a no trespassing order, sent away under the threat of arrest if she insists. Probably not entirely legal, but she bought it. She leaves, we lock up her car in the garage, remove the battery since she has keys, and change the door locks that evening. Her stuff, every scrap, gets boxed up and dumped off at her platonic friend from school's apartment. If this were the end of it, no revenge. 
She knew how to open the glass sliding door. He comes home after about three weeks of ignoring her to find the house trashed. She threw something sticky on the car, threw flour on that, squirted chocolate sauce from the fridge all over the interior, utterly trashed the house with the kitchen being the worst. Couldn't prove it was her, but she got a visit from the police anyway. She tried to get the phone number from the married police officer friend, but never admitted anything. Now it's revenge time. I was an outpatient going to the VA, in that town twice a week for physical therapy, the only one of the bunch that didn't have a daytime job. The platonic friend she moved in with kept getting wetter, sticky gummy bears stuck to his doors, windows, to his floor, in front of his apartment, all over his vehicle, and it kept happening. I don't know if he got evicted or got tired or spooked about it, but he moved and didn't take her along with him. Eventually, she moved in with some of her high school friends going to college in a city about 50 miles away. She wasn't in college anymore since the money got cut off, but they got gummy bears once a week since I had to go to the VA hospital in that city once a week by that time. She wound up doing stripping to pay her share. Some of the college girls did, not totally uncommon. Gummy bears were sent to her joint to her stripper name, the creepy, evil-faced kind with fangs and crap. The girls graduated, moved, and two years after Mike, she was on her own, knocked up by a street artist that fled back to wherever when she told him. She delivered twins with no idea where the guy was. She was a twin, one of eight siblings, important later, she had triplet brothers. Her mother was a twin, that was actually a running joke when she was with Mike. We told him that with Fertile Myrtle he needed condoms made by Mack trucks, the same rubber thickness as a truck tire inner tube. The gummy bears continued. She got her body way back after the pregnancy. Not like before, but strippers come in all shapes and sizes. Went back to the aforementioned career and collected welfare on the kids. But the gummy bears kept coming. People in welfare housing will do anything for a few bucks. She met a guy from several states away, ran away with him, got knocked up again. The guy disappeared again triplets this time. We found out later when she came back she had seven freaking kids in those years. At least the gummy bears stopped since no one here knew where she was, not even her family. So skip forward after about 25 years of no contact. The kids aged out of the welfare system. She moved back to the area and in with her mom. Seems welfare for the kids and her career choice doesn't have the best retirement plan. She had the gall, the self-entitled ego, to friend every one of Mike's friends on social media. We were supposed to rug sweep the entire affair and accept her again. Nope. I'm sure in her self-absorbed narcissistic mind she didn't cheat. She didn't crush Mike, she didn't trash his house. But every action has an opposite and equal reaction. It's the way of the universe. She got a lot of pictures of gummy bears. But no one was going to friend her, not taking go away as an answer. She had the gall to stalk social media and show up where we had group events in public places. The gummy bear delivery started again, action and reaction. My friend Mike died of cancer just over a year ago. She had the gall to show up at the funeral home. She met a wall of meat, his friends, that told her exactly where to go. He had a good woman that stuck with him through thick and thin, and the two didn't meet. After she showed up at the funeral in less than a week, someone poorly stenciled gummy bears on the 20-year-old piece of junk she was driving with spray paint all the way down the side and across the back while she was at her fast food job. The bears were inappropriate, not cute and cuddly. Action and reaction. Jump forward a year, she decides to show up to dinner and drinks partly a tribute to Mike being gone a year. Recently she got a 10 pound size see-through gummy bear with an object shaped like a certain something inside, action and reaction. That specifically shaped something says platonic friend down the side. The gummy bear is made of virtually indestructible resin. You can find the molds online. Yes Dorothy, revenge can come past the grave. Mike's friends are semi-retired or retired, and we have a lot of time on our hands. Don't screw with lifelong friends. I feel like this lady has to have literally nobody else to turn to if she's being treated this way and still trying to insert herself into that friend group. Our next story is casually haunting my childhood bully with discounts and special offers. 
For most of elementary school, I went to a private school where the educational quality was pretty good, partially because the class sizes were so small. Unfortunately, that meant every year, I had the same bully and no crowd into which I could disappear. Every year, on every school playground, during every recess and gym class, at every time that any teacher, coach, or lunch lady looked the other way, this kid would steal from me or physically bully me as childhood bullies tend to do. I don't think that it was anything super personal. I was just the youngest and weakest kid in the class and also I wore glasses. I guess that meant I deserved it. This went on until we moved to a different state, at which point I heard he moved on to bullying the only other boy in our grade who wore glasses. I guess wearing corrective lenses means you deserve to be bullied. Opportunity. Fast forward. Let time heal most of the bruises and fix the broken eyeglasses, and then add internets until Mr. Bully's name shows up in my social media feed as someone I may know. Quick slash casual sleuthing indicated that he has now a basic one-man landscaping business, which has a phone number, The Revenge. Since that fateful day on social media, whenever I come across a marketing form and have three minutes to kill, I enter Mr. Bully's personal info and business phone with some comments about how I'm very interested in their product and service. He changed his business number three times over the years, and I like to think the marketing calls have something to do with it. Who knows? Maybe someone was selling something he was buying. In any case, eat crap, Josh. If you don't want to go too far, I've heard the best place to turn for spam calls and emails is Scientology. Our next story is, accuse me of not calling, don't have a ring back. Not much of a story, but one that still makes me smile to this day. Several years ago, I was a dog groomer at a chain pet store. One of the services we offered was an express groom. This was an add-on, and the dog would be worked on the moment it got there and had to be done in two hours or less. We weren't allowed to put the dog in a kennel at all, so we had to let it sit on the table until pickup. So, I had an express groom, and when I got done, I called the owner. At the time, it was real big to have a ringback song that played instead of hearing the ring. The phone went to voicemail. I left a message saying Fluffy was ready. When that was up, I called again to see if I could get an ETA on when they would get there. Once again, we went to voicemail. At the three-hour mark, I had no choice but to put the dog in a kennel. My other appointments had come in, and I was running behind. Five hours after dropping off, the owner shows up mad. They were chewing me out that I never called them and how dear I put Fluffy in a kennel. Then they wanted the whole groom for free. I worked commission, so I was not having this. I did my part. Their dog was done in the two-hour window, and I called them. The manager came up to ask what was going on and was going to zero out the groom. Before it could be done, I asked was their number right in the system. They said, but I didn't call. So I asked them, did they have a ring back with this song? I had it stuck in my head all day. They looked me dead in the eye and said, yes, how'd you know? I just said, I called. The manager made them pay for the groom with the express groom added on. I never saw a customer gather their dog up and leave so fast. They never came back. If you drop your dog off at a groomer's that says there's a two hour window and more than two hours goes by, wouldn't you be calling them? I don't know about this person, but I would care about my Fluffy. This next story is, I'll just undo the last six months. Applied for a government job working for my county's assessor's office. Got it. Decided it would be a good job to keep as a career. So I tried my absolute best to keep up with everything. Kept my head down, was polite, tried to be nice, etc. The tasks were pretty simple for me. Draw some maps, verify some property boundaries, organize some papers. I was so bent on keeping this job that I actually took on a side project for their office. The manager had assigned a geolocation accuracy project that was just idiotic. The county didn't need it for any reason. I think she just wanted to look good. She actually wanted to find the rotation of the north arrow on the 10,000 plus maps down to the second. For those who don't know, look up degrees, minutes, and seconds. It's basically one thirty-six thousandth of a degree. Very precise. The north arrows had been placed by another tech and rotated ambiguously to whatever looked like north. The rotation of the north arrow was completely useless because it wasn't based on any other angles or rotations. It was just plopped down. But she wanted to know anyway, so I didn't ask. 
Anyways, I looked into their files and saw that this project was going on for 10 years. Exactly the amount of time she had been manager there. Nobody really did anything. The organization was bad. The data was incomplete. The process was dated. So one week, the entire office was out on vacation. My manager and two peers. I decided, you know what, I'm sick of looking for jobs. I want this job as my career. I did all of my work and all of their work and I reorganized the geolocation accuracy project and made an excel sheet that basically did it for you. The next two months I finished it completely. For those who don't know, the county works on a fiscal year so everything has to be done by a single date every year. When I started work they were six months behind. I put the pedal to the metal and we were able to catch up and submit everything in time. For the next two months, my manager completely ghosted me, didn't give me assignments, didn't talk to me, didn't answer my questions, wouldn't even open the door for me. I found my own work, helped my coworkers, and kept busy, asked if I did something wrong or if I could improve somehow, and she said nope, my work's good, just keep doing what I'm doing. At the end of my six months, to the day, she hands me an evaluation sheet filled with lies. I was pawning my work off to my coworkers. I was being disruptive, I was late almost every day, I was bad with customers, blah blah blah. And as she hands me this paper, fires me on the spot. Right after the fiscal delivery, I confronted her big time. All she had to say was, doesn't matter, and that's all you're getting. I asked her how she could say I hadn't done any work. If she even looked at the geolocation project, or kept track of what I'd been doing. She gave some obtuse answer and said, doesn't matter. I was convinced she was afraid I would take her job. When I started working on it, I made a backup folder filled with her original files, nearly 700 Excel sheets. Cut, copy, select all, delete. I was there one minute and gone the next. Have fun working on that project for the next 125 years. In a weird way, I wonder if OP single-handedly made it look like they actually did get fired for good reason. Our next story is, won't keep quiet? I'll make everyone laugh at you and get you thrown out. I told the story to one of my friends and she suggested putting it here. Back in 2009, I worked in a cinema in Wales and one of the perks was getting free tickets, which I used a lot as a specky 19 year old film nerd. I'd been waiting for a good horror movie, and I thought Orphan might be it. I got there early, picked my seat and settled down, just as the adverts start up. A group of maybe 10-15 year olds flood into the cinema. They decide that the row in front of me is where they want to go, and wheedle and plead for everyone to move up so that they can sit together in one row. Obviously people say no, so after some foot stomping and whining, they decide to sit five in the row and five in another row. They're snorting and cackling and chucking popcorn and putting their feet up on seats and playfully nudging each other throughout the adverts and then the trailers. Movie finally starts and they don't quiet down. I head out to the ushers, my mates, and let them know what's occurring. They come in, tell them to behave, but there's not much else that can be done for minor disturbances. The teen monstrosity shut up for about 0.04 seconds and then resume. 10 minutes in, someone else goes to complain. They get told to shut the freak up politely and they don't listen again. By now, three of the group, all girls, have begun a running commentary of everything that's happening in the movie. People shout for them to be quiet. They don't listen. A little while in, maybe halfway, minor spoilers, the lead actress breaks her own arm in a vice and one of the girls lets out the most ear-splitting screech and I finally lose my patience. The girl says, oh my god, did you see that? I said, we all did, you stupid bleep, it's the freaking cinema. The place erupts in laughter and the girl stands up and starts yelling at me, but I have no idea what she said because I'm very rarely that witty and I was creased with laughter and then the usher walks back in. The other two girls start weeping on cue about how I'm abusing them and the usher, after being told that's not what happened, decides to side with me and finally gets the manager and throws them out. When I left after the end of the movie, they were at the ticket office with one of their parents who was berating the staff for a refund that was not forthcoming and blaming me for their behavior. I still smile when I think about it. 
Our next story is, don't leave your stuff when moving out. This was maybe five or six years ago. My sister and I lived together, and at the end of the lease, she was planning to move out of state for her job and to live with her friend. I'm trying to finish packing and cleaning, but the house was large for two people, and we had things in every room. I go into my sister's room to see if I need to get any trash, and saw she's kept her TV, DVD player, totes, and miscellaneous items throughout the floor and in some boxes. I'd already hired a crew to help me clean up, but by the time they got there, I was in tears with stress. I know I'm also to blame as I'm not exactly the tidiest and had a lot of crap, but she left so much and cleaned absolutely nothing. I gave the two who came to help my sister's TV and DVD player as an extra tip. Anyway, I'm on the phone with my mom and I tell her what's going on. She offered to pay for a massage, was super nice, and helped me calm down. I decided that my sister would be getting her own things back as birthday gifts and Christmas presents. She thought it was a good idea. So for the last 5 or 6 years, she's gotten her own stuff back as Christmas and birthday presents. I didn't want to keep it all until I gave it all back, but I gave her what I consider to be important, i.e. her prom photos of her and her friends, photos in general, favorite board game, etc. Obviously it wasn't that important to them if they left it all there. So hey, might as well go passive aggressive with it. This next story is, I reply to a condescending comment in kind. So I'm not from the US originally. I went to high school here, college, been here more years than not. I would say I assimilated well, but sometimes I still get the usual, where are you from originally? Your English is so good. I've been to this country that's three countries away from yours, so I'm basically an expert. Most of the time it's well-meaning and people usually are genuinely interested, but when you hear this over and over, you get a sense of who's being genuine and who's not. So over Thanksgiving weekend, my girlfriend invites me to dinner with her family. I've met them before and we get along great. Her dad calls me to rant about the football team. Me and her brother are in a fantasy basketball league. Her mom always suggests baby names to us. Good vibes all around. At the dinner, some of her extended family's there, which includes a lady who was introduced to me as wife of the uncles. She's a recent addition to the family, from what I can tell. Anyway, I immediately know what kind of person this is. Carl and I were recently in Marrakesh, the most obnoxious pronunciation. It was so eye-opening. We donated to all these charities this holiday season. We're just trying to do our part. Eventually, I have to talk to her. She finds out I'm not from the US originally. Her eyes light up, huge smile, the most high-pitched condescending voice. Wow, your English is so good. So I replied with something I wanted to say for a while, but hadn't seen a good opportunity. Thank you so much. Your English is good too. Everyone in the vicinity got very quiet. Girlfriend's mom came to the rescue to take her away on some task. The evening passed without further incident. After everyone left, her brother and dad are laughing hysterically, recounting the incident. Her mom is trying to appear stern but can barely keep the smile off her face. In the following days, the girlfriend is gleefully relaying to me all the family members who thought this was hilarious. I'm about to beat her brother in fantasy this week. Life is good. That said, our final story of the day is, brother absolutely pollutes our childhood home and yard with plastic. He gets it back in pieces for decades. My 34-year-old female, younger brother, 31-year-old male, had a penchant for anything that shot projectiles as a kid. We both grew up learning how to shoot from our dad, and we had a pretty large backyard to practice in. We couldn't shoot real bullets because the neighbors were too close, but we used the heck out of a pellet pistol, and he had several airsoft guns. Bro used to chase me and my friends around, spraying us with the plastic airsoft pellets, all in good fun and he was in much less shape than I was at the time, so I usually could outrun him no problem. He estimates he shot around 50,000 of these little plastic balls over the course of a few years. Fast forward to now, and we both regularly are at our parents' house, where we work at the family business, in the backyard. Every time it rains or the area gets mowed, some of these red pellets pop up from their graves. I've been finding them and collecting them for years. Sometimes I leave them on his workbench for him to discover when I'm not around. Sometimes I hand them to him directly. Sometimes I put them in his car on the driver's seat. I've even roped in some of our co-workers on the joke, and now they return any pellets they find to him. 
Bro just rolls his eyes and tosses them into the trash, while I smile sweetly and remind him that I won't shoot him point blank in the forehead while he's napping on the couch, like he did to me when we were in high school. Maybe you could have said that OP was too annoying, but when he heard that last anecdote about taking the airsoft pellet directly to the forehead while napping, totally justified. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely awesome story of revenge, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.